Hi, it's me, Trix Mattel, and I'm back hosting the Pit Stop for a very special season where we are watching Canada's Drag Race. And you know, I'm from Northeast Wisconsin, which is just a stone's throw. I can basically hear Celine singing from my house, so I'm very qualified to be here. Now, our guest today taught me about inner beauty, but also a trip to the doctor never hurts. Give it up for Trinity the Tuck Taylor. Woo! Hi! Yay! I'm so glad to be here with you. I'm glad to have you. I mean, you're like an expert at Drag Race. You finalist on season nine and you won a season of Drag Race. Well, yeah, but you still have more followers than me. Well, I didn't have to split mine. Monet still has. Uh! Okay, so before we get into Canada here, what are your thoughts on Shea Coule joining us in the Hall of Fame? Yes, in the Hall of Fame. I was rooting for her from the beginning, even before this aired. I, I was waiting for her to get on All Stars because she's such a queen and- A queen. I just think she's just so regal. And like, girl, she wore evening gown for the finale lip sync and still flayed. Everything drag queens want from drag, Shea Coule does. Completely, 100%. And I'm super excited to see what she does through her reign. Me too. And I'm excited because she owes me money and now she's gonna have to pay me back. <laughs> okay, so last episode, we had to say goodbye to Juice Box and she sashayed away. And this episode, Kine seems really shook that she was even in the bottom. What do you think about that kind of confidence? Girl, this is not confidence. This is called cockiness. And it, it, it's one of those things that like when you see a girl that acts like that, you're like, Girl, where is this coming from? I, I will say, my first time on Drag Race, I don't know how you felt. I didn't always feel very confident. So in a way, having that confidence is an advantage, but girl balance. It's all strategy too. You know, you have to know what to say, when to say it, and know when to listen. And you definitely don't be talking back to the judges like, what the hell you think? You talk back to your parents, they send you to your room, girl. You're one of those pageant whores who sit, uh-huh, thank you, thank you so much, thank you. It's a privilege. Wait, be honest though, don't you get those sheets at those pageants? And don't you go, no, no. Of course you do, but you do that in your own time. You don't do that in front of the judges. You don't be no. like, girl, this is not it. I look beautiful. My talent was amazing. No, girl, you're like, mm hmm, thank you. I will definitely look. Because in pageants, those judges are the same ones all the time, just like a drag race. I mean, it's that delicate balance where, like, you can't win drag race without confidence, but you will lose so fast with too much confidence. You can be confident and still be humble. And exactly. um, that's, the, that's always the, the best way to go, I think. Oh, by the way, I have to say, we know Brooklyn. You probably have known her maybe a little longer than I have even. Isn't it crazy to see somebody who's one of our peers hosting a televised drag competition? I mean, out of a lot of girls, she is definitely the one to be the judge. She's stunning, polished, good at almost all the challenges. And Canadian. And she's Canadian, yeah. So I would definitely have put her on there too. She looks so stunning. And I what know. I love is, She's being herself on the judges panel, and I, I really like that. Trinity, you have to be yourself because everybody else is already taken. It's true. I just thought of that, I made that up. The next day, Brooklyn enters and she announces it's time for the mini challenge, which is the girls have to get into a quick ballet drag for the Nut Smacker. Now, in your personal experience, do you live for the mini challenges when you're competing? I mean, I mean they're fun to do. Uh, it, they're a little silly. Do you never win money? You win responsibility. Yeah. It happened to me on season seven. I won a mini challenge and then I had to be a group leader. I'm like, this is not what I wanted. Girl, the same thing for me, but uh, the, the time that I was in the bottom on season nine, I was the winner of the previous challenge. So that mean I, meant I have to be the team captain the next episode and I was in the bottom for it. I mean, oh my gosh, it was crazy. There is some strategy in try not to win anything and try not to be in the bottom for a little bit. Yeah, if you can do that. The thing is, is like you said, when you go in, you're kind of tunnel vision. You don't really know what to do or what to think. You just try to just run through it. And I don't think I ever thought about that during season nine. Now, all stars, there was a lot of strategy, but. I like the mini challenges because it's funny to see what quick drag means. Some, to some people, quick drag, like Kine, was looking like a woman. Uh-huh, yeah. And then a few of them were full bows of the clown, which I love. Yeah, some people have just this innate, natural talent to just paint really super fast, and they just look amazing. And then yeah. others, you know, they, they have to go the bozo route, which is great. You know, I would totally have done that. <laughs> 
So the winners of the challenge are Boa and Anastasia Anakwe. And this week, the maxi challenge is to perform an overacted version of Heritage Minutes, which is like a Canadian period drama. So Alona's the last queen picked. Do you think that can mess with your head in the moment? Absolutely. When you're like the last one picked, I wasn't like for one of the challenges on season nine, I wasn't even the last picked. I was like third from last picked. And I was still like, what? Like, why did y'all not pick me sooner? So I can only imagine being picked last. It really does mess with you. The accent, they thought you were dumb. <laughs> Could be. I will say um, in season seven, um, Violet was the last picked and then she won. So, I mean, in the beginning of a competition like this, nobody knows nothing about no one anyway. Nope. I think she just didn't pick her cause she forgot her name. <laughs> That's what T I think. Totally. Yeah. And then on top of that, Lemon, like Lemon was in the bottom last week and then she slayed this week. So you would have never known that. Yeah. Certain people are good at one thing that they're not good at other things. And even if you're like a comedy queen, you could be great at comedy and then just bomb Snatch Game. <laughs> I can't stand you, <laughs> you f***ing whore. Ah. So the queens break up into little groups to start to learn their lines. Now on Drag Race, is a group challenge harder than it looks? Oh, absolutely. You are- Absolutely. You are not only having to do your part, but you're also having to play patty cake with your teammates so they don't try to uh, throw you under the bus. And if you're team captain, oh girl, you better ask everybody, make no mistake. I made that mistake is- I remember that. Yeah. Was it cheerleading? What was it? No, it was uh, the good morning bitches where <gasps> I just assigned everybody a role because I thought that I did a good job of picking and I did do a good job of picking. Was this the day of the iconic, no, you're done and I'll tell you why you're done? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, I call shade, yeah. I think group challenges, uh, to me in drag, if I'm gonna f up, let me f up on my own. I hate collaboration and I hate having to depend on people. Uh, we re I remember you with milk, right? Yes! <laughs> yes! I don't want somebody to mess me up, nor do I want me messing up to tear down somebody else. I mean, that's awful. Well, I mean, that I can deal with. You know, I can sleep at night doing that. Now, you know, someone messing me up is, is something I can't live with. We know how you sleep at night, bitch. Hanging upside down in a f***ing coffin. <laughs> Ooh, can we talk about the Kine and Brooke moment. It was big RuPaul Pearl, is there something on my face energy. Girl, that's, that's the thing is that you, why? I, I, you know, you can't talk to the judges like that. Like you just cannot. They are your superior. They are the one who is judging you. You have to just soak in what they're saying and fix it. That's it. Yeah, that really is literally it. When she said, I forgive you, I was like, oh, but you know what? It's a different dynamic because she, this is the first time there's been the head drag queen on this competition show has probably worked with most of those girls. Yeah. So maybe they forget that she's the judge and they need to like professional distance, you know? Yeah, that's the thing about the way that the judges are set up for Canada's Drag Race is that there's not really one head judge. It's like three equals. And so, right. and also Brooklyn is somebody that they, that they consider a peer. So maybe they do feel too comfortable with her versus like if RuPaul was there, I doubt Kime would have talked to her like that. Girl, it's not gonna do you any favors to make a judge think that you're a bitch. Nope. I don't care if you're levitating. If that judge is like, hmm, wasn't flying high enough, I would be like, oh my God, you're right. I'm so sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could do better next time. Yeah, I'll fly higher, thank you. So the queens are directed in their scenes by Jeffrey, and some of the queens excel, and some of them can't remember their lines, like Tainomi is struggling. Girl. Trinity, how are you with line memorization? Well, uh, not great. Um. <laughs> but you know what? Every time there's a comedy-related challenge on Drag Race, though, you turn the party. Okay, so I have a learning dis disability where it affects my memory too. I really work super, super, super hard to like remember my lines. So if the girls are not remembering their lines, girl, you obviously weren't doing this, you know, through your sleep while you were eating, while you were washing your ass. But the problem is on Drag Race, a lot of times the girls learn their lines independently and then they're saying it together for the first time on camera. And it's that's like, what happened this time. Okay, what group of the two would you want to be in? 
I definitely would probably want to be in Boa's group just because her group seems to be the heavier hitters. I agree. That group does seem a little more like the the ride or dies. They're they're not afraid of acting a fool. Right. And that's what you really have to do. That's what Drag Race wants is they want to make the audience and the judges laugh. So it's a new day and it's the runway presentation and the girls get to recreate their first time in drag look. What did you think of this theme? I think that's so fun. What, what, how fun would it be to like recreate your first look that you ever did? What, what did you wear? I did, um, it was a pink waitress outfit with, it was very 60s, cat eye glasses with, it was a brown beehive. So brown bangs with a big beehive. It was just like a brown hair Trixie, basically. What would your first drag be? My first drag costume, I actually borrowed it from a friend who did drag already. It was a pair of blue jeans that they had like taken more jeans and shredded them and made like this fringe down the sides. Think of like Christina Aguilera dirty. That's what it looked like. Oh, like distressed, gross. No hips, no work done, just a stick figure and these really gross looking low rise jeans with like really terrible makeup. That was me. <laughs> Honestly, that's not the worst. I mean, to get to go back and do pants and denim, that's not the worst fate. Listen, Roxy Andrews made the denim on the runway work. She's an inspiration to us all. To us all. Okay, Trinity, please follow me in my journey and I have to have a candid and brave discussion about the fact that nobody on this cast wears breasts. Listen, I don't wanna, I'm not mad, but did you notice the drag queens don't wear a lot of boobs? In this cast. Yeah, I've noticed that. And it's kind of like a, a big thing with, with drag nowadays, apparently. You know, there's no rules. So I think for the ones that I've remembered, it works for them, I think. You don't like it? I just feel like if you're gonna wear hips, why wouldn't you wear boobs? Like, I don't really get that. You're only throwing your proportions off more. I think they probably thought, hey, I have wide shoulders. Why do I need boobs? When did I become an old school queen where I'm like, where's your hips? I'm just, I apparently I'm a hundred years old. When you started and I started, the queens of queens had the padding, the boobs, the waist. It was all about this. Yeah. Not wearing breasts and not wearing hips is kind of like a relatively new wave of drag. Trinity, let's talk about the runway. First up, we have Lemon. What do you think? I think she looks incredible. This yes. gown, girl. It is beautiful. I saw you react physically when we were watching it. You did one of these. Yes, it would. She's beautiful. She looks stunning. The slit that goes all the way up to the hip, all that fabric, her walk, the hair. And way to come back after last week. She slayed the challenge and she slayed the runway. Yeah, and no boobs. I mean, really killed it. <laughs> no, I mean, let's clock the no titties. There's no titties. Okay, moving on. <laughs> okay, so here we have Rita Baga. Do you gag? So Rita Baga reminds me of like the really old school queens that I grew <laughs> up around. Katya and I looked it up, she's only like 35. But she reads, she reads more like Tempest Du Jour. You know what I mean? I, that's exactly who I was gonna compare her to. Like they're, they're old school drag, very costumey, very like she had those big huge flowers on her shoulders and even the, the petals on her, her eyelid. It's very old school. Yeah, it's big shapes, almost family friendly drag. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like Priscilla, queen of the desert. Exactly, old school. This isn't my favorite look though. The flowers on the shoulders, the smattering of stones. It's, it's not my favorite look. I think it looks okay. I, it's not my favorite, like you said, but it's not the worst. Speaking of safety, the judges were not living for Miss Tainomi. What do you think? I actually think it's okay. What do you like about it? I like her walk. She walks with confidence. I love the top ponytail, the like 90s club fetish wear. This little peekaboo fishnet should have really just been like a full fishnet or a full dark tight. Yeah, it was a little distracting. So what do you think of Kiara? Kiara reminds me of a very young Naomi Smalls. I get it, it looks very, very similar to her original, but to me, it's not elevated enough. That's the issue is, it's not riffing on that idea to show how much you've grown. This could be the same dress. I, I mean, mean, I think she just started drag last week, so it's literally a week apart. Yeah. No titties. <laughs> no titties, no hips. No titties, no hips, no problems. Up next, we have Anastasia. 
What do you think? The dress is kind of basic to me. Basic. But I love a good pageant girl and I love her hair and the bitch is selling it to me. I mean, like she's uh -huh. walking around the puddles, girl. She's doing her figure eights in an evening gown competition, honey. She has posed and prints. I, I think she looks good. She's even doing that thing. I mean, I don't know if you can see my nuts when I stand, but that thing in pageants where they put the hand like yeah, exactly. It's like perfectly perched. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love it. I like it. I mean, in a, in, a, in a show where no one's really done a pageant look yet, this is kind of the first one of the season. So, yeah. I live. All right, we have Boa. I live. Do you live? Yeah. Oh, she looks snatched. The hair is quaffed. Her makeup is stunning. Beautiful. No titties. Love it. And no titties, but let me say this. She has, I think, like the meat to support it, and she made it a reveal. Even the shoes, all the way down to the shoes, that's like a pussy pump. I think her makeup is probably one of my favorites of the season. I think she's so beautiful. I think beautiful. she's really pretty. Good for you, bitch on arrival. All right, up next we have Kine. <sighs> yeah, well, this, was... this look, she was not kind to herself, okay? It was unfortunate. It kind of fell flat. <laughs> right off the bat, the face and the legs don't match at all. Oh at all and there's skin showing in the back where the corset goes she's in like a rain jacket yeah have you ever painted yourself a whole one color no i'm not that kind of girl i have and the challenge is you do have to paint things you've never painted before behind ears armpits like everything and um unless you're gonna really make the color consistent that illusion goes right out the window this is the first one that i really actually preferred the original i know and that is such a bummer for her to hear i'm sure because the point of it was to improve on the original i've seen kind's videos her youtube videos she's a fabulous hairstylist and i love her confidence i love her looks from last week but this was just such a this is a myth Ooh, priyanka trend do you live I live. I think that she looks amazing. I don't fully see the, the reference of like her original except for the colors. The only thing I will say though about this look, I don't know if anybody else clocked it, but the freaking hat is so cheap looking. Girl, I know. It's so obvious that she took a hat and like stapled fabric to it. That don't even a hat. That looks like she took some cardboard. <laughs> she had a pizza. <laughs> she had a lovely pizza. Yeah. <laughs> And she stapled some fabric to it. It reminds me of, I mean, it all comes back to Gaga, but it really reminds me of Lady Gaga around Faye Monster time. Yeah. She knew she looked good because she was walking really slow and she wanted the judges yes. to see. <laughs> I'm trying to think of your walks on Drag Race. You kind of changed your walk to match the look and the character. Yeah. It was always changing. So for her, I guess she was really trying to like, I'm that bitch. I walk at my own speed. Thank you. Or, or that skirt was really freaking tight, bitch. <laughs> yeah, she could move her legs. Great look, though. I mean, and she really did the base of the challenge. She improved on the original. So good. I love Priyanka. Me too. She's, I mean, two episodes in, she's really making an impression, which is hard in a room full of drag queens. Yeah. All right, Scarlet Bobo. I think she looks great for a stripper. Um, this... <laughs> <laughs> this is totally something I would wear. You know what? That's her vibe, though. Like, I mean, I know you're not really a party girl, but can't you tell that she's the she's the party girl? Oh, she's the party girl for sure. I love it. And I love the use of fire. That was so cool. Come on. I don't think I've seen someone do that before. I mean, drag queens and fire, I don't think those should go together, but... I mean, not with all that hairspray, but she was brave, girl. Never forget on Drag Race, we are only about two torches away from being literally a circus. Now, what do you think of Miss Alona? I am not a fan of this one. I think it looks almost identical to her original look. And yeah. I don't think that the silhouette is flattering on her. Here's what I like about it. I like that it's obviously, to me, a bit of like a Rocky Horror reference. Uh-huh. Because it's blood, the mouth, the big black hair. But I think that she either needed to go bigger on the shoulders to make that silhouette stacked up here and then thin down here, or more of a cinch. The body is really one shape right now. Yeah, I like the fact that the coat is oversized, and I'm a huge fan of, like, oversized coats. I mean, I like oversized, too. I mean, at my size, most things I try on are just way too big, so... And I just don't like the hair. You don't like the hair? The hair is like my favorite part of it. That weird like perm. You would like that. <laughs> now I have to say, when it comes to Jimbo's look, I respect anybody who doesn't need the theme to be horror to go horror. I mean, I love this. This was probably one of my favorites on the runway. I think that her makeup- You would do this. I would totally do this. 
And I love the makeup. She is brave for those heels, bitch. The outfit, her silhouette. And the gag with the ponytails, bitch, was fierce. I like drag queens who, they go on the runway and they tell a whole story that you, you, when you go home after watching this show, you'll remember this number. And that's what I love about Jimbo is that she is very unique. And when you see a Jimbo look, they're all so different, but you know it's Jimbo. Uh, she's just very specific. I love it. Would you say iconic? I would say iconic. She's, for me as a casual viewer, it's the first name I memorized from the cast. She was, from the first episode, was my favorite. Yeah, it's it's hard to not really love her. And in a competition like this, a lot of these more, like, Instagrammable queens probably don't really feel threatened by her, but I think they're gonna get a little bit shook to their core that she's gonna stick around a while. They need to wake up, because Jimbo is yeah. a threat. Now, we got to see both acting scenes. Which one stood out the most to you? The burnt tuck scene. I That was my favorite. Yes. And there was a little Trixie Mattel read in there. Don't think I didn't hear it. They said something like, um, I don't want my contour to look like Trixie Mattel. Whatever follows that, I don't want to hear it. I hope in the next challenge they drag you for filth. Mm, they probably will. <laughs> so we find out this week's winner is Lemon. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Lemon slayed the acting challenge and she looked amazing on the runway. So absolutely deserved it. What a comeback. I mean, let's be honest. The story is usually you fall on the bottom and you fall back in the bottom and go home. For her to go bottom and then win, I mean, that's pretty lit. Yeah, it's it's really a good story arc for her. I hope she just keeps going because there's something about her personality that I'm really loving. So the bottom two are Tainomi Banks and Kine. They lip sync to If You Could Read My Mind, which by the way, written by Canadian folk legend, Gordon Lightfoot, an amazing song. What did you think of the lip sync? I thought that Tainomi just slayed it. I mean, she just, embodied everything that the song was about. She was pulling out the splits and the twirls and the, the whatever she was doing this way and that way. I lived. I thought she was great. I will say next to Kine, from the first few verses, it was a pretty clear. Absolutely. So often on Drag Race, the lip syncs, one person is starting on a level and the other person never even catches up. You know, like. I think she just was, she knew she was going home. She was defeated. <laughs> before she even yes. got the lip sync. I was gonna ask you about that. I always feel like on Drag Race, you sometimes can feel it in the air when it's someone's time. And I think she could feel that like it was her time. Yeah, it was definitely her time. I mean, her talking back to the judges again, they're not gonna keep her. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, what did you think of the lip sync? Um, I love the song. It's so like pride at a gay bar. It is. I will say it was shocking after the lip sync when Kine said, girl, stop crying. This is my moment. I'm the one going home. Uh, I know, but you know what? That kind of made up for all of the, the cockiness that she had spewed the last couple of episodes because it was kind of a funny moment for her. Like, girl, this is my moment. Let me go home and it be about me. That's how I leave relationships now. <laughs> Okay, Trinity, we're only in episode two, but if you had to predict a winner, who would you predict? I mean, shocker, a tie. Uh, <laughs> right now, I have a top two. I think Priyanka and Jimbo are gonna go all the way. If I could throw in a third. Lemon. Um, I'm gonna say Boa, because that makeup is really sexy. Oh, yes, so that's our top four. Lemon, that's our top four. Boa, Priyanka, Jimbo, yes, God. Let it be. I love talking to you today. And do you remember this? Do you remember when I went to do All Stars and you said, good luck, bitch, because I'm winning All Stars 4? Do you remember that? No, when did I say that? We were on that tour together and I was going to do All Stars and you said, good luck, because I'm going to win All Stars 4. Oh, we'll work. We'll look. <laughs> And then I remember the night Alaska won All Stars 2, I was with her. She gave me a hug and said, you're gonna win three. So there is some psychic energy in the world. The All Stars winners, they are all psychic. I, I love that. Whoever Shay says wins will win next. Peppermint. Peppermint. Trinity, thank you so much for joining me today. I love you so much. You're one of my all time favorite drag queens. I'm not just saying that. You know why? Because you are so beautiful and you love to act a f***ing fool. Well, thank you. I I just love, I just love you. <laughs> so believable. You know what? This is my moment. Okay, okay sorry. I'm going home. 
you are the host, okay? Sorry. <laughs> and thank you for watching The Pit Stop. We are going to keep recapping Canada's Drag Race right here on the RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel. Next week is episode three, and I will see you then. Goodbye. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel. And you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of What You Packin'. Hi.